So hi everyone, this is Conversations with Trish and Chris and we wanted to uh, interview Mark Goujon. We have Mark Goujon here as a guest and Mark has started an online business and has been running an online business now for several months this year. We were fortunate enough to actually meet him in Phoenix. Yeah. It's interesting though, I, I knew you were in the room in Toronto but didn't know of you. Uh, which is interesting as well. So it's it's when we go to these networking events, when we go to these um, events that we connect with each other, sometimes you just don't even know who's in the room. And then when we did the challenge, we had a 90 day challenge, that's when we connected and that's when we got to know each other. And then Phoenix, we connected. So it's just brilliant to have you here because we wanted to ask you a few questions and uh, just see where it goes. So I have a chat. And uh, my first question to you, Mark, is just share a little bit of background with us, your story, and what was the reason or your reason why for starting an online business? So I was a fat kid in a minority growing up. And that really shaped my kind of outlook on on life and as a you know kid I was overweight and as a, um, when I say I was a minority I grew up in a community that was like 80% Hispanic so um, that kind of gave me a sense of that I had to have like a sense of humor because I wasn't that I was I was a lover I wasn't a fighter so I wasn't gonna be you know if I didn't keep you know friends entertained and you know everything but um and uh, one of the first challenges I had was um, being overweight, um, was dropping that weight um, over 30 pounds at the time to join the Air Force. And so I did join the Air Force, did that for 12 years, um, got to live in Europe for two years and kind of traveled the world. And um, some travel was to places like Iraq that weren't exactly glamorous, mm. uh, very dangerous, and experienced some um, life-changing events with uh, loss of friends, um, ending a five-year marriage, coming back, and also being just completely blessed to meet my wife, who we've been together now for 10 years. We have a four-year-old daughter. Um, but one of the ways that I coped with some of the experiences I had while deployed was I started writing. I was writing my memoirs, my book, and I'd always been into poetry. And then I started um, getting into songwriting and um, invested a lot of money and time into that and then really wasn't making any progress. Um, and I lost hope. I really got into 2016, I'd say it was probably my, my biggest low when it just didn't feel like I had any outlook I, I had a good good career a good job but it wasn't like great um i was inconsistently like working for different companies over a six-year span my paychecks were you know salary was changing my vacation time was crap i had you know a lot of um things with like health insurance was a major concern losing it abruptly and my wife having to go to the hospital while she was pregnant so a lot of that weighing on me and and um not really feeling fulfilled with the work but i started doing self-improvement stuff and watching things and trying to get um, a handle with my weight and watching bob proctor and tony robbins and looking for different opportunities a lot of it was geared towards um how can i market my my songs like how i've, I've got what i feel are great products but i have no idea how to get them out to people and I saw this ad with this like British dreamboat and he was just saying everything you want to hear. And I was like, Whoa, this guy, uh, he's got, he's got the lifestyle. And if I can, you know, you know, apply that for the songwriting, my wife's online business, then, you know, this is uh, something uh, I'm intrigued, you know, but I think you're, um, your spidey sense and you know, you get hear so many different things. I, I mean, I tried the Bob Proctor thing. I tried Ty Lopez thing and I, you know, I was grabbing a lot of good stuff, the secret and feeding in even Tony Robbins. I mean, I've been looking at his stuff for the past like 10 years, but no one gave you the, how do you do it? How do you like step by step? What's the system? What's the process? 
like you get a lot of like um, things that get you pumped and then you, you know, life hits, you know, you really don't know how to apply it and make it into an income. So all that said, um, with this op opportunity for this online business, um, uh, I saw someone in the community that was living the lifestyle with their family and I was doing online classes and never spending any time with, with um, my family and knowing with my daughter getting older, wanting to have be a part of her childhood and not only see her for an hour or two a day. I was like, Hey, you know, I'm going to do what it takes to, you know, take control of my life and stop trading my time for money. Yeah. Wow. That's, um, that's an incredible story, Mark. You know, I, I to, to, to understand a little bit more about your sensitivity and your ability to write songs and um, can, can you tell us a little bit more about what you, um, what you tap into or how you want to say market your music now? Like, can you, have you, have you gained some skills to understand how you can actually start marketing your music? Um, because, I mean, I've personally listened to a couple of your songs and they're amazing. Thank you. So, um, you know, you, you really do have a gift and you need to get this out so that people, you know, to share it with others and, and to uplift them because some of this, some of your music is amazing. So. Um, do you think that you've learnt some ways to to move that part of your life forward? I, I mean, I definitely, I, I feel like the um, the diving into Facebook and the YouTube, like the type of training you get for this business, you know, you know an online business, it, you can totally monetize anything. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, I, I have so many different ideas that, um, as I'm working on the, the primary um, educational service that I'm, I'm, I'm marketing now, because um, I believe so passionately in the community and how to, it can transform everybody's life that um, wants to put the time and resources and, and really apply what they're learning. Um, but for the music side, the challenge for me was always, um, I'm not a singer, I'm not a musician. I'm not going out there trying to have a career performing on stage. So I have to pitch my music to a music publisher who then puts it out to an artist right. to cut and release as their own. So um, for me, uh, back in Arizona, I was able to, when I was at the, uh, the conference that we attended, I ran my first ad that was amazing that I could uh, like I'm going to be full disclosure here. My great, my big white Buffalo is um, I'm aspiring to get Lady Gaga to cut and, and release. And like, she's like obviously the highest top of the food chain here. Right. Um, so if I can reach for her and get somewhere in between, <laughs> but my goal is ultimately her. Um, but here's what I learned from being part of this, you know, community in this um, online business was I could target specifically the city of LA, New York, people who claim to be employees of the house of Gaga. I mean, I, I was like blown away with how if, if you are looking for a specific person's interest that your service or your product can serve. Yeah that you can be that tailored. I was just like amazed. I was like, wow. And then to have um, the ability to know how to structure your story and your ads and everything. So I feel, uh, I feel a hell of a lot more armed just from the short time yeah. I've been doing this to know how to find who I want to get my, my material in front of. Um, That's great. That's really, really good. And he, well, even in the, the structure, too, of um, uh, there was some of the training we've had where they, they mentioned, like, 
you know, having something to provide free value so people can see like, hey, I'm getting this for free and it's so valuable to me. So that kind of structure, I think, with my, my wife's business, she's in um, construction and foundation repair and, and ways that even with um, the music is I could give away and I, I am actually for anyone that um, joins um, our community, I offer for free is one of the songs that I wrote specifically for the community. Oh, okay. But what's as, that? What's that? What's that one called, Mark? You know, wake up, live today. Wow, that sounds really cool. But now, if I wanted to, I could do a songwriter's edition of my some of my songs and bundle in an CD and offer a a song or two for free. And then, if they like this that music and the singer, because I use a few different people for multiple songs, I could say, hey, and if you, while you're here, if you want to buy, you know, six of my songs for $5. So I, there's another revenue source there that I haven't really tapped into because um, I'm trying to have the songs cut without them being out there by an, another artist. You know, you can yeah. listen to music on YouTube. So, but, but it, these are all techniques and different things that, um, you know, turning in my, my head that, um, a year ago, just going miserably to my cubicle. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, it's uh, pays the bills, and I, I like my coworkers. But it's not like when you look at like who's who's ahead of you, ten, twenty years in your organization. That's not like that's my dream. You know, no, no. <laughs> that's not what you're. That's not what I'm aspiring for. It's like. Okay. How did, especially in the military, you know, I, I've gone from like every year or two, I was changing jobs. I was like, so that's why being a contractor when I first got out and rotating wasn't a big deal. You know, I've been in the same area now for eight years and I'm like, wow, I show up the same building for eight years. That's a long time. That's like, that's a long time to be in a job that, if you're not really that passionate about, I mean, and I know for some people there eight years is like, Oh, well, I've been in my job for 20. So I mean, my brother did 20 years at the same mill that my dad worked at. My grandfather worked at my aunts, uncles and cousins until that, um, they closed their doors earlier this year and sent mm. their jobs off to, to Mexico. So there's really no stability out there and they're forced now. Um, Thankfully, they're in a state that is helping them with learning new skills. But my brother's off learning how to uh, become a truck driver. And my dad's off learning new skills for his second career. And he's only a few years away from retirement age. So yeah. um, so I want to be ahead of that. I don't want to be in a situation where, um, you know, I'm forced into a career change. Yeah. It's interesting you talk about all of that because what was going through my head, there was a lot of things going through my head as you were talking and it was bouncing around. But a lot of it that came out was we as individuals, all of us are creative. We have a creative, a creativity about us that we don't, that's undiscovered a lot of the times. And you were saying like being in that corporate job is not the, well, it's not it's just not the vision, is it? It's not the, um, the, purpose that you want to really truly fulfill so do you think that people out there have creativity in them that's just never tapped into like never discovered due to them oh. being in a, a societal conditioned role of you know going to college getting a job staying in that job as long as you can I don't think we ever get to, we're corporate accountants, Chris and I, and apart from creative accounting, <laughs> you, you don't fully realise your potential creatively. And it's interesting, uh, I hear all the time people say, oh, I'm not creative, I can't draw, or I can't sing, or I don't know, I'm, you know, creativity is on so many different levels. And, and I don't even think it has to be about being creative. I think it's about, are you doing what you are 
passionate about, what you're meant to be doing, what you enjoy doing. So if you, um, uh, you know, I use this example of um, something that Tony Robbins mentioned was like, if you're somebody who is passionate about bowling, then you need to hang out at a bowling alley. Um, if you're passionate about tennis, you shouldn't be hanging out at a bowling alley, always dreaming about playing tennis. Well, it's, it's that way. I think so many of us, and I know I'm conditioned this way as well, is that you don't think you're programmed from um, your family around you, the you know, media, so, so societal norms that you have jobs that are safe, that are stable, that those are the only way you can make an income and a living. You can't make an income off of your passions. Well, I can tell you there are people who are playing video games that have become pro video players and they get endorsements for doing it. There's a 12 year old girl who just won a TV show contest and has got a um, contract to be an LA performer for a you know, million dollars doing ventriloquists of puppets and stuff. So here's a girl that was probably, you know, like my daughter, Nadia, in her room pretending to make her animals talk and turned it into something she was completely passionate about and had a family there supporting that. Yeah. You know, didn't tell her to stop wasting her time with talking animals and she's making a living off it. So I, I use these examples because, um, you know, I, I was really passionate, not about, you know, songwriting. I mean, I, I why'd I get into songwriting? I was looking at, to me, creating a passive income that if I could write something once that gets on the radio and played and, you know, Christmas song is one of the things that I first released and self published myself. So that's Christmas song picks up every year. I'm going to get the residual income. So I was already in the mindset of how can yeah. I work harder and not harder and have an income that when my parents are getting up there in age and retiring, I can take care of them. You know, I'm thinking, you know, like that's my mentality with the songs. So I even, as much as um, I love the songs that I've done and I've written songs for my daughter, for my wife, and, and I love that creative outlet, that's not really like my like 100% passion. There are hobbies, and that's what I say for when you talk about the creativity, that look at what are your hobbies? What are you spending time when your busy schedule allows you to that if you're like I was a YouTube fanatic and you're watching a lot of stuff on things that just interest you, that's probably something you can monetize. That's probably something with the right skills you could connect with other people who like that and then give them books, products, services, live conventions that are there and make a career out of it. You just don't have the confidence and you don't have the system and skills yet to know how to do that. But it doesn't have to be a creative thing. It just has to be, do you really enjoy doing that? Do you enjoy baking? Make that your livelihood then. Stop yeah. only doing it on the weekends or for holidays. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's so good. It's interesting because Chris and I went to, a long time ago, we went to an internet marketing uh, conference and, you know, people were talking about making money from, uh, ebooks that they were, were selling online that they created on all of their passions and their hobbies and their areas of interest. And I remember, I think it was one person was talking about their interest on tractors. Now there's a massive following on tractors <laughs> and I don't know whether you call it the same thing there in um, America. It's like farm machinery, but there is just a massive, huge following. And um, a person was making lots of money from <laughs> creating and building a following based on tractors. So you're so right. And we don't know that we don't explore that enough. Um, yeah. It's just very interesting that you can, and there are people out there that, you know, worry about not having a particular product or service to create as an online business. And it just takes, even an interview like this to talk to someone and just extract out of them their life's journey and their life's experiences and what they've, how they've served other people without even realizing it. 
Um, mm. it, it, it just, because we've done it, Chris and I have done it. We've sat there with people and interviewed people and you just pull out of them or you draw out of them through this process, you know, their abilities and skills and passions and loves. And, and, I, and yeah. I think that's, you know, it's, it's very easy to do. You've had an incredible journey. A lot of your journey that we know of has been around health and wellness. And you've made some amazing transformations. Yeah. What would be your words for people out there that are seeking some sort of transformation? And a lot of it, I know a lot of people that are looking for transformation in health and well-being. And what, what, what would be your advice to people? So my advice is it all starts here. It really does. Like, it doesn't matter. You, there are, are so many products. There's so many ways, you know, it's, it's like, it's like painting a wall. You know, you can roll it this way. You can use a brush. You can do that. You can, you're going to get paint on the wall, but mm. it, it, it comes down to, do you have the mindset to, you the willingness to paint that wall? <laughs> you know, like if you don't, you know, and, and I think it, that was the, the main thing is that if you, you have to feed in and you have to have, um, if you don't have like daily, weekly, positive, you know, you know things feeding into you, then you're going to stay in those, those habits. You have to have a pattern disrupt and, and really a community that's going to support it. My biggest successes and, and progress that I made on my weight loss journey um, you know, I was kicking around the same 10 pounds at my high of 305 pounds last year, had, um, professional photos of, um, a grand opening that my wife had of her building in January. And I was, I looked like a giant meatball. I was huge. And I was 10 pounds lighter than my highest weight at that point. And I was like, Oh my God. You know, it's one thing when you have like the perfect angle and you're looking up and you're like, well, <laughs> it's only two pins now, um, but um, when you got the full body side profile and you're like, that's my before photo. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the accountability so, is what really kick-started me. So when I got in that 90-day challenge, I was already losing weight, but um, even now this new challenge that um, we're part of, I'm doing more knowing that other people are relying on me to set myself to a higher standard. And I think you need accountability partners. I've, um, to get through the month of November for the, us in the U S Thanksgiving, I mean, the whole holidays around stuffing your face with pie and you know, a, a heavy meal, um, and giving thanks for that. But, um, uh, <laughs> I knew that, you know, the parties that lead up to it, the parties after I had three out of, probably half or half about a dozen people that I reached out to. I said, do you want to be scale buddies with me? You know, let's get through November and not gain weight. Wow. The only goal is for us to share the scale photos with each other every morning. And so I've had three people that I've been doing that with and it helped. It, it got me cause I've been maintaining really for five months, but it was during that first 90 day challenge that I had my most gains with that accountability that I lost my 50 pounds. Mm. And then, um, now I'm ready to lose my next 50 pounds and being part of a challenge of accountability with other people who have fitness goals, like-minded people, you're feeding off each other's energy, whether that's for your business, that's for, you know, education, that's for whatever self-worth having other people that are on the same track, trying to do the same thing. It's going to get you across because when you're low, they're high and they're helping you through when they hit a low and you're in a high, it's just, you're, you're, you're doing it for each other at that point. So it makes everything easier. Yeah, that's, that's great, Mark, because uh, the way that I see it is that we won't do it for ourselves, but we want to do it for ourselves, but we'll only go so far and we need to have that other person there to help us be responsible for ourselves. It's really odd, but that's, that's what we do. And you, you hit the nail right on the head to have that accountability partner to, to give you that drive, to keep you pushing forward. 
that was great. That was a really good share. Thank you. Yeah, anytime I try to do anything alone like that, you know, it's, it's you're just like, nah, oh, you know, you, you might have some motivation for a while, but having somebody else, and I, I found with, with um, the community we're part of, when I've actually 100% tried to do something to help someone else out and had nothing for myself and felt like, hey, I'm, you know, like I genuinely want to help this person with something, I end up getting so much in return in, in value that I was like, wow, this is unexpected. Like I actually have like an accountability partner in this challenge. And she said in her opening statement, like, I don't want to do this challenge, but because I don't, I know I need to. Right. So she, that was like private and I caught my attention. And then she mentioned, she's like, um, does anyone be my accountability partner? And I was like, you know, I got so much going on. I've got my core little group of friends that I'm like, you know, um, always, I want to keep, you know, encouraging them and I'm encouraging me. And I was like, I don't know if I want to take on somebody else. I was like, well, that's probably exactly why I should. And already in the, the four or five days that we've been accountability partners, I've grabbed so much value from her. And I was like, wow. I mean, here I doing this, like thinking I'm helping you out to like get you, you know, through this because I know the value of these challenges and I want to be, you know, a good, you know, good person to help you help you and you're already like i'm already blown away like by this person what she talks about her stories and her authenticity and being authentic conversations and i'm like wow she's really making me question my authentic conversations with my own family and friends and being more genuine with people and having those tough conversations so yeah i just sorry i'm going out of that rant but i i really it's amazing when you try to help someone else out, how you get it in, in tenfold in return. And you're just like, wow, this is, I, I had no intention of this being something that was going to really pay back for me like, like this. And it, and it really has. Yeah. It's interesting because sometimes we, you know, sometimes when we receive from people, as in receive compliments or receive advice or we receive feedback, it's not half as fulfilling as you providing the feedback or the advice or the help or the support or the guidance or whatever it is that's required at the time. It is so much more fulfilling to be providing rather than receiving. And it's, yeah. that's a, there's a big message in that, isn't there? Because this is what we're doing. This is really what we're, we're about is that, value that we're providing to others that help and support that we're giving to others it really is. It, it's really rewarding it's really fulfilling and this is what the journey is all about the bigger purpose yeah the bigger yeah. purpose and i'll say, say the other thing is i like the i like the way that um this line of business is structured that um for instance, you want to share your story, right? And you record it once, you can craft it and you can, you can tweak it to, to tailor it to how you want, but that's it. You've told that story and you've, and you've done it in, in the fashion that you feel comfortable with and you put it out there to the world. And there's going to be that audience and the billions of people out there. There's going to be those people who connect with you. They gravitate yeah. to you. Um, and, and it's global. Like, yeah. Whatever in any other time could you do that, right? Yeah. Um, but I've been part of other things where I've tried to like, you know, make a side business and you're hitting up your family and your friends or you're um, always having to tell your story over and over again to someone new and you don't really even know if they're, this is something that they care about because or if they even like in the mindset to you know, they might have health issues, but they're really not in the mindset to, to do anything about their health issues. Whereas if you're looking at people who are looking um, at self-help videos for weight loss, obviously those people are ready to try to take more of an, the next step. Yeah. So I, I mentioned this because there's a, um, a woman in my community here, like in my neighborhood, that she sees me religiously. I go to um, the Wi-Fi area in our neighborhood every every day and 
she's like, what is this guy with his laptop? You know, like I have to go, I have to go there because once my daughter sees me, it's over, you know, like I'm home and that's yeah. it. So, <clears throat> so she starts talking to me about it. And I'm like, oh yeah, well, you know, I do internet marketing and, um, you know, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, you know, you can monetize Amazon, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, just like, I, I have no hard sell pitch. If you're interested in hearing more, here's my website because it's there. The information is there and either you, you connect with it and you take the next step and you know, it's, it's like, um, our mentor JJ says, you know, you're the usher at, at the theater with a the flashlight. Mm -hmm. There's your seat. If you want to enjoy the show, go over there. I'm not carrying your ass to this seat. Yeah, see, <laughs> that's true. So uh, you walk over there and you enjoy the show or hit the road, you know, but, um, and that's it. And, but with, um, with this lady, she has a product and she's part of this health and stuff. Now I do, I do Atkins bars and I do, energy drinks that I do two of them a day and the, the five hour energy drinks. So these are off the shelf products. They're not inexpensive products. So if I could get something that is a proven more healthier thing that hmm. she's selling, that's within my price point of what I'm doing and it's just swapping it out. Why not try it? You know, yeah. you lost weight doing it and I'm trying to lose my next 50 pounds. No, but I already know how to lose weight. I know it's really about here and accountability. And I could do any diet as long as I stop eating the crap that I know I'm not supposed to, which is going to be here. Well, anyway, she's so aggressive. I was like, oh, blowing up my phone with text. You know, I'm all about time freedom, right? Stop, you know, stop trading your time for money. Have more time with your family. Have more time to do things. And not courteous at all about hey are you available right now or like read the body language like i'm going out the door i gotta get back like my nanny out of here so i can you know spend some time with my daughter or not and i'm just like wow i'm so glad that i'm not in a business structure yeah. that makes mm. it so i have to go and feel genuinely like the air of desperation like oh my god please sign up for this you know, like, you know, it's like, I'm not desperate. I mean, like, like my biggest desperation is how can I best convey to you how life changing this can be for you? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, yeah. I'm desperate for you, for me to be able to connect you with that message. So you, in a way that it resonates with you, because this is life changing stuff. I mean, we've got that uh, a member of our community, Amy, who had a series of unfortunate family losses. Yeah. And in the six month period was pulling off without doing any work because she was coping with, with loss and, and, and moving and all these things. And she in six months is making <laughs> almost in what I'm doing in a year uh, mm -hmm. on, on my day job, what I was doing, it's like, that blows me away because she's been in doing an online business for four years and, and built the foundation mm. and has, you know, a, a 24 seven, 365 source of passive income. Yeah. That's why you look at these celebrities and again, go back to the music stuff who one hit wonders. Well, they can live off that one hit because it's so damn popular. Money is always coming in after the fact. It's the same yeah. thing with a video ad. You get that one hit, that one, that did connect and gets that that customer who really likes that product to buy that product and they're doing it consistently while you're sleeping, well, there you go. You know, you you've you've hit the 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 lottery and you put the work in to earn it and it didn't just, you know, wasn't luck because you you made your own fortune. I don't know. Exactly. Sorry, exactly. My answer, the long rants. It's <laughs> You can edit all this down. No, 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 no. It's very true because that woman that you were trying to slink away from doesn't realize the power of, of internet, the power of marketing online and the power of a global audience because her message will absolutely resonate with many, many 
hundreds, if not thousands of people mm. out there. And that's what we fail to realize now because people are still thinking geographically with a physical yeah. bricks and mortar business. They're still thinking that they need to be targeting their local geographic area. Lots and lots. I've got small business owners here that still think like that. They know the internet's there. They're just not sure how to capitalize on that to get their message out there. So it's so true what you've said in that whole share of yours. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's the power of what we have in our hands right now. The fact that we can sit in our own homes and market once we've got the skills and we've got the foundations of a business that you can just sit here and market to the world. It's just um, really, really powerful. And like you said, you know, with Amy's story, you know, the, the amount of loss and grief that she was going through this year and to be earning in six months what people have earned in 12, it's just incredible. Um, because she'd done the foundational stuff, because she put all these things in place, it's just yeah. incredible. It's um, like, like this, um, this woman in, in particular, I told her, she tells me her story. And I was like, you know, <clears throat> I, I, do you, there's a, a way that you could tell that story once and, and then actually target people that are specifically like, looking for you know the type of product you're selling here like for me i'm interested but the price point was beyond what i was willing to pay and i would have to change my routine and everything to accommodate you know this thing like you know i'm, I'm now i'm buying extra water and i gotta you now bring bottles to work and mix it and all this other stuff but like she they, like you said there's a target audience out there just ready to get her stuff for sure. and if she wasn't just limiting herself to our neighborhood and our local city and whoever she runs into that, you yeah. know, is a little That's away, it. <laughs> hoping like, That's it. what about my product? No, <laughs> I'm on the way to um, get some pizza right now. So thanks for that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So the skills that we're learning and developing through creating online businesses is valuable for any business owner that's out there that wants to just get their voice and get their message out to a global audience. And uh, I think there's uh, nothing off limits and there's literally zero competition. Uh, it doesn't matter in which niche area, in which target audience that you are marketing to, there is no competition. It just comes down to creativity and how creative you can get with your message because you're unique and you're individual and you have your own story and that can be shared and there's only people that's going to connect with you and your story that will click on that ad potentially or click yeah. on that article or click on that blog post or uh, click on your website. So it's, you know, it's just about creativity and just getting your authenticity and realness out there to people and connect through stories. And your story is incredibly powerful. The transformational process that you've had will be really, really interesting to people. I know the viewers that we have on our YouTube channel. And uh, I just want to just step back into that a little bit too, because this is what's really going to help people because you mentioned this a lot, the mindset, like what's going on up here. What is that thing that you would advise people or tell people to sort of do or look at when it comes to mindset, making that shift or making that change up here? Because this is where it all starts, right? Up in the head here, the psychology, the subconscious. Yeah, I think for for me, um, first you have to have hope. You have to have something to believe in. And uh, it's going to sound silly, but the thing that started giving me hope initially was there's a kids movie called Trolls that came out a little while back, and yeah. I watched it with my my daughter and my my wife, and the um, main character the um, protagonist in it he was really depressed because his grandmother was eaten by a Bergen uh, very traumatic event when he was a kid and 
and he stopped singing and he turned gray and he lost his color. And uh, Justin Timberlake was the singer of this and he ended up finding his voice and having something to hope to live for with his new friendships and his family, uh, with his new, and he started singing again. And that's how I felt with my song. I was like, I'm that troll. Um, <laughs> and, um, and it gave me a little hope. And then the modeling, seeing that somebody else could, you know, someone that wasn't an animated character could actually turn their life around um, and have the self-discipline and the, the, the life-changing things that can happen. So for me, Chris Pratt, the actor who is in the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, um, I was, at the time I was watching him on his sitcom TV show, which he wasn't the main character, but he was this kind of overweight, lovable kind of guy. And um, he had lost 60 pounds to um, get himself in shape for, for movie roles. And he got picked up for the lead of Guardians of the Galaxy. And he's on the cover of Time Magazine and said, from zero to hero. And he did like a selfie where he showed like a six pack. People were blown away with the 60 pounds he had lost. Mm -hmm. And I went, I thought to myself, wow, I could be the um, comic relief all my life. And, or I could be the leading man in my own story and get my crap together. This guy can do it in six months and have his life changed to where he is like now a blockbuster movie star. Um, why can't I, you know, get out of my rut and transform my life and transform my, my body and transform my entire life, you know? So I think having somebody that you can see someone else did it. And I, I mean, I got to be honest, there's people in our community that I look and I think, all right, they had a hell of a lot harder than I did in life. And they, you know, I've had a lot of good opportunities. I had a good family foundation and I have a good foundation now with my current income and with my wife as a second income to, to do things. And these people were really had their backs against the wall and they they're who I aspire to be five years from now or four years from now or three years from now. And I'm like, if they can do it, damn, then I need to get out of my own way and do it too. You know, that's, that's, how, that's what I think is like, if you can look and find somebody that you're like, man, I really, yeah. I really love their story. I love how they could do that. And then I can make, I, 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 I'm going to give myself enough confidence and belief in myself and take the faith that I have what it takes to do it too. That's, That's great. Brilliant. That's, you know, it's like, um, like modeling, you know, you find something, you find someone or something that you want to aspire to and you model them. I mean, that, that's really powerful too, because, it's going back to the whole accountability thing again, you know, you don't think you can do it or you don't know that you really even want to try. But when you see someone else do it, you can say, okay, well, if they can do it, I can do it. You know, it's, it's that I, well, if you can do it, I can do it. And, and that's the message I think that we try and, and put out there as well. You know, we're just ordinary people. And if we can do it, you can do it. It's the same thing. And, you know, it's, it's really cool that we can do that. And we can model off other people's triumphs. And we oh, yeah. become triumphant in the same, at the same way. It's great. I love Chris's belief and passion. <laughs> and it's so, because you always are the person to say, if they can do it, we can do it. And it's, it's so, so powerful. And it's been a powerful message for me. As soon as you started connecting with that message there i'm thinking to myself you are always of that if that makes yeah. sense you are always of that you are if they can do it you can do it if they can do it we can do it it's like yeah. you always have that message and it's very empowering and it's and, and i think it comes back to that having somebody else to like bounce things off as, as well yeah. like chris and i really work well together we have this incredible friendship where there's trust and faith and that built up and she will bring qualities like that to this business 
where I might even not lacking, but it might not be there. And she will bring that to the sort of business partnership. So a little bit off track, but I just wanted to tune into that because that's that having that belief, that level of belief, that level of passion, that level of enthusiasm was the reason why I took this opportunity on literally because like it was so much faith and trust and, and passion around it. It was like, Oh, well, you know what? I don't want to miss out on that. I want a piece of that. (laughs) And, and it was like, she was so right, like so true in that direction. So it's faith and belief. And, and I'm hearing that in you, Mark. as Yeah, definitely. It definitely, it, it definitely, um, the belief part is, is key. Uh, it drives your everyday small choices Mm. because you're not going to do something full heartedly. If you do do not believe that what you're sacrificing for time, money, energy is going to get you the results you want. So you might see it as something that is attainable and you see other people doing it. But if you don't have the self belief that, I can actually, I can do this. And, and because other people have done it and, and I know I'm capable of doing what they've done, I can do this. If you don't really believe full heart, like, so the, like the songwriting things, like I would have momentum and then I'm like, but I don't have anything to model. I don't have like someone who's a songwriter to say, okay, if I follow these steps and I do this and I, I will be able to pitch this song to a, a Sony or whoever, you know, whatever brand marketing. So it's kind of like you, you end up losing the steam because you're like, oh, this is going to even freaking work. Whereas, you know, doing this online marketing thing, you know, why I'm investing all my time and effort into doing it and, and working it, you know, every day consistently is because I know that, you know, what I'm doing a year from now, my life is going to be completely different. I know it because I've seen it in, in so many community members within less than a year that are doing it, that have quit their jobs full time doing this stuff. And I'm like, okay, if you can make your own online business, I can make my own online business. You know, if I consistently do it and I'm using the same type of systems and the same techniques and strategies, having that kind of stuff, that's one level. Having a whole community that's all doing it together that are learning and feeding off of each other because now it's not just I've got one um, actor or athlete or musician or someone that I can, you know, use as a role model. I have over a thousand people to model off of that or be inspired by any given day to have like so many nuggets of insight, just immersing yourself with anything, any, any day you feel like you need inspiration. You don't need to go into YouTube. You don't need to go read a book, go watch a few videos of your peers, your friends, your colleagues, your, fellow entrepreneur business owners and you are going to be inspired by the stuff that they're doing the insights the 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 the, the information they're sharing it just blows me away like you know it's it's i don't know the 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 community aspect of it alone just to have that um it, it is worth 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 everything you know it's just the the way that that um what I say, the environment you put yourself in is so important. And so how your whole state can change by that environment you're in. And here you are. I've got that environment on my phone all day. I can <laughs> plug it right in. If I need to, you know, if it's raining outside and it's crappy. Oh, beautiful on the Gold Coast right now. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know it, it, it's a, it's really powerful to be able to, um, to connect, uh, here you are on the other side of the, the world right now and we're connected. So, yeah, totally. That's good. Actually, what, what part of America are you from? We didn't ask that. We didn't actually tell people, did we? 
Uh, so I'm originally from Massachusetts, the northeast part of uh, the United States, and now I'm in a little less known place called Florida. Not a lot of people. It's not a big touristy place, <laughs> but yes, that's where I relocated. Um, I've been a, a Floridian officially um, 17 years now. So yeah. uh, my adult life, I'm spending more time away from my hometown than than uh, I spent there, but you know, those years they can remember, I'm already surpassed. Um, yeah. So there's only really one true blooded Floridian in my house, and that was my daughter. She was yeah. born and raised. So. so you've built and building and continue to build a successful online business. You're promoting and advertising on different platforms. You're advertising to a global audience now. You've developed incredible skills. And you've done that in a very, very short period of time, which is amazing. What do you think has been your biggest growth in this whole journey of building an online business this year? Because it's this year you've been doing the business. Um, I'd say the biggest growth has got to be the, um, I guess it, I, it has to be that sense of, like being present, if that makes sense. Um, it does. One of the things is like, I feel like I was always looking so far in the, the future mm. and then you're not satisfied with where you are now because um, you're always like visionary. You're always trying to like think of like what you could be doing. And then there's those people, and I don't do this as much because probably because my, my memory shift because I don't dwell is you know who are living in regret all the time in the past and so um i'm not going to say i'm perfect at it but i feel like i'm a lot more willing to be in the moment and know when I have control over my emotions and not react but respond to things where before um you know your whatever those autopilot conditioning things you're habitual response oh this is said so i had to feel this way whatever you know i feel like that's been the biggest transition and part of that mindset thing is is really um being more conscious raising my consciousness you know overall and how that's helped me to you know when i'm in an emotional rut or feeling something to try to like be a you know my own third party of like okay why are you looking at it why are you t why what what's what you know questioning it more that I, I didn't so so I guess that's been the big the big breakthrough is the self development you know brilliant yeah that's great awesome yeah that's really good. I think I think you know Trish and I were having conversation this morning and I think that's that's where we're at too, like our, our personal development, like it's just, and our awareness of things. I think that that really does, um, it just helps you come to terms with things as they come up in your life. You're not, as you say, reacting as much as just accepting and then moving forward with whatever challenges they are. But that it's, it's all this personal development stuff that the mind shift, the, the, the things that just happen as you progress, you know, it, it, I think it just helps you in your make decision making in, in all aspects of your life. I think you're spot on with, with that, Mark, really I agree. I think it too, um, it goes back to the having faith and like mm. um, belief that it's going to, it's going to be okay. So you can ride the things out because you're like, oh, you know, this is happening for a reason or it's part of the journey or I'm, I'm, I'm leaning. I'm le you're more into feeling forward mode of, hey, everything is an experiment and this doesn't work out. Let me try something else or whatever. So you're more adept in your own life of applying that because if you it can improve in one aspect, it ripple effects throughout the others, you know, and 
<clears throat> I am a, a fan of the The Walking Dead. Um, and one of the, actually, sorry, I am a fan of The Walking Dead. I'm not going to apologize for that, but um, <laughs> it's actually a different show that I saw this on um, Last Man on Earth, uh, which is another post apocalypse, but it's a comedy. Um, <laughs> in that, in this um, show, there's a, a drug cartel leader who is uh, telling this story. And in this story, they say um, that basically a series of things, but the horse, um, the owner's horse runs away. And the neighbor says, oh, your horse ran away. That's so sad. He's like, well, who can say if that's, you know, a bad thing? Um, and then the next day, the horse returns with an entire um, herd of wild horses. So his business grows. And then he's like, oh, you've got all these new horses. That's so, that's such good, good news. It's such a good sign. He's like, well, who can say if that's really a good thing? And one of the horses knocks over his son and his son breaks his arm. It's like, oh, son broke his arm. That's horrible. You know, that's so bad. And he's like, well, he broke his arm, but I don't know if that's bad. Who can say? And the next day, the government comes in and drafts all the military-aged men to send them off to war. And the, all the men that went off to war ended up dying in a battle, but his son didn't go because he had the broken arm. So any circumstance, any situation, mm. you don't know what that outcome is going to be. For in that moment, it's us in our perception at that time and where our mind is on whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing. We've been these things. Yeah. But it's just life. It's just moments happening. And if we get out of trying to figure out what the outcome is and we just ride that wave, it might be um, that next step that's giving us that major breakthrough in our life that we needed to get us that one step closer. That um, missing the elevator, let's say, um, and you're like, ah, oh, shit, because you're in such a rush. And then that person walks up to you. And because you're in the oh, shit mode, if you were in the whatever mode, maybe you had that conversation. And that conversation was with the person who, you know, became a business partner, someone you ended up marrying, who knows. So it, it really, you don't know. Um, if it's a good or bad thing, because who can say? No, I think we. I think, I think we need to finish on that note, because that that message was brilliant and and so thoughtful and so inspiring. Um, I, I think that I feel that this is where we need to uh, complete the interview and complete the conversation because. Um, I think you've done an amazing job at sharing your journey, your story, what inspires you, um, what drives you to create a successful online business and the transformations that you have done over not just one year with your business, no. but in over many, many years out of many different adversities and challenges that you've faced. Um, it's amazing what those adversities and challenges do for us, just like your story there that you were sharing. Is it good? Is it bad? You know, these adversities and challenges generally lead to something even more incredible or even more rewarding. And so I just think that was an amazing story that you shared with us. So I, I on behalf of Chris and I, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time um it's been an absolute pleasure and our relationship friendship is going to continue well into the future and yeah. um yeah I, chris did you want to add anything to that i just feel really blessed and really thankful that um you had the time to spend with us today and i learned more about you today than um than I knew before. So thank you for sharing and being so open and authentic. Um, I just, yeah, I just want to say thank you really. 
thank you for, for coming on and, and having a chat with us. Well, thank you for having me. And I just want to say, I, I love you too. I mean, I, I, you've been just such a, a fantastic part of um, this past year for me. And um, I'm what you bring for value for everyone you and you're um, engaged with, with in our community and your members are just so lucky and so blessed to have, um, to have you knowing that you have their back because um, I hope and pray that I can, you know, take 10% of what you guys provide for value and, and do the same for the people that I interact with because you guys are just phenomenal. And, um, you know, anytime we can chat, I'm always game for that. And uh, definitely looking forward to the next time we can, um, hang out in person and get those hugs in. Um, yeah. but, uh, thanks. And, uh, I love you. So that's it. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Mark. Awesome stuff. Thank you. All right.